So the Pythagorean theorem relates to a right triangle, and if you know two sides of the right triangle, you can figure out the third side. Uh, we're going to kind of transition into the distance formula with the Pythagorean theorem. So right here, the, the question I'm going to ask you guys is, what's the distance from this point to this point? How far is it? And the issue is, it's not, it's not obvious, right? Because it's a diagonal line, you can't just count the grid. Okay, if it was a point above or below or next to each other, you know, certainly you could figure out the distance between those two points. It's three, right? Or the distance between this point and this point is four. But how can we figure out the distance between these points? So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. If you know two sides of right triangle, you can figure out the third. Like he said, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay. So we're going to take A, and in fact, A and B don't matter, but we're going to make A 3, we're going to make B 4, and C is always a hypotenuse. I know it says D here, but D means distance, so that's why I labeled it D. But C is the hypotenuse, we're just going to call it D. So 3 squared plus 4 squared equals D squared, okay? Now if we simplify that down, 3 squared is 9. Okay, and 4 squared is 16. 9 plus 16 is 25, right? And in order to solve for D, excuse me, we we'll take the square root of both sides. The square root of 25 is 5. And I'll go back to the slide in a second. But if the square root of 25 is 5, then I know that that side length is 5. Okay, so we're going to use that concept of the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the distance formula. I will probably let you guys use it on a quiz, okay, because it's not, when we did midpoint formula, it was pretty easy. x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. Distance formula is a little bit um, more intricate, more involved, uh, longer, harder to remember. And uh, especially since in this class we actually haven't gone over Pythagorean theorem, um, I'll probably let you use the formula. So basically all you got to do is simplify the expression, plug it in and simplify. But anyways, how can we use the Pythagorean theorem to come up with the distance formula? Well, notice both of these have points, okay? That first point would be what? This point I'm pointing at right here. What is that point? 5, 3, thank you. Here's the x value, here's the y value. Okay, what's the second point right here? Thank you, 8, 7. Okay, well if there are two points on the graph, then we can use the Pythagorean theorem to kind of come up with a formula that could figure out the distance between any two points. Now in general, um, now, guys, you don't have to write all this down. As long as you're just focusing on this explanation, it's fine because it's all information. But notice that if I wanted to figure out the distance from this horizontal distance, I would do my x2, or the second x value, minus my x1. And that would give me, in that case, it was 3, right? It would just be 8 minus 5. It would be this value minus this value. So it would be x2 minus x1, and that would give me the 3. If I wanted to figure out my vertical distance, I would take this y value and subtract this y value, y2 minus y1. In other words, in this case, it would be 7 minus 3 will give me 4. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. We know the horizontal distance is x2 minus x1, and the vertical distance is y2 minus y1. We can take that information and substitute it in for the Pythagorean theorem. So in other words, if my horizontal distance is x2 minus x1, I can plug that in for a, the a in the Pythagorean theorem. And if I know that the vertical distance is y2 minus y1, I can plug that in for b. So we're taking the Pythagorean theorem and we're uh, kind of uh, fusing it with the uh, two points on a graph. And the only thing you have to do from there to get d by itself is to take the square root of both sides, okay? So at the very least, this is going to be your distance formula. 
And that's where it comes from. It comes from the Pythagorean theorem. So, yes, absolutely. So, D, the distance between two points, is what D stands for, is the square root of that expression. And that's why I'm probably going to let you, um, you know, maybe write it down on your quiz before you take it, because it's going to be hard to remember. But, but it's the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So for every problem you do today, you'll be using that formula. You might as well write it on your uh, worksheet as soon as you get it. All you basically have to do is label your points like we've been doing and plug those values in, and that will give you the distance. Um, one thing you guys might not be comfortable with is uh, simplifying radicals, and I will be happy to help you with that. It's not too terribly hard. Um, here's a printed version of the formula. It's the same thing. might be able to read a little bit better. And remember that D just represents the distance between the two points. We can use this formula, for example, and I don't know if we'll do this or not. You could be given two points on a, on a map. You know, every, every point on Earth has a longitude and latitude. And you can actually use this formula to figure out how far away they are from each other. One other thing I want to talk about before we do an ex uh, a few, uh, several examples is um, you can actually do, like when, when we did slope, you know how we talked about the fact you could do y2 minus y1 over x2, or you could do y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. You can do the same thing with distance formula. You can put the y1s and the x1s first. It won't matter because you're squaring it, so it'll end up becoming positive anyways, okay? But anyways, you can just write it like this and it'll work all the time. So let's go ahead and do some examples. Find the distance between these points. One, uh, sorry, negative 1, 7, and 2, 8. Just like with slope, all you have to do for step one is label them. And you label them exactly the same. For the first point, you label x1, y1. The second point, you label x2, y2. Like I said, you can just do this once on your worksheet, but... You need to write the formula out for sure, okay? And hey, you know, if you can memorize the formula for a quiz, I might give you some extra credit. I might give you five extra points. And again, that formula is the square root of, and all that stuff inside goes inside, x2 minus x1 squared, y2 minus y1 squared. something I noticed I need to fix there. When we plug the values in for step three, make sure you're using parentheses when you plug them in, especially negative numbers. I'm just going to go ahead and redo that because I did not use parentheses the first time around. Let's try this again. Okay, so you're going to have two sets of parentheses. So x2 we labeled as 2, so I'm going to put that in parentheses, minus x1, which is negative 1. And so notice, it's around a bigger set of parentheses, and that's being squared. You have parentheses within parentheses. And then you have a plus sign, y2 minus y1, which is 8 minus 7 squared. Let's see if I can... uh, you can't do that. You've got to do what's inside parentheses first. Remember PEMDAS? You do what's in parentheses and then you square it. Oh, you mean 2 plus 1? Yeah. You can. I was going to say that's so much more easier than... All right, go ahead and do that. Okay. I just know if I do it this way and I show my work, I'm not going to make a mistake. If you do it the other way, you know, it's up to you. Anyways, that does become 2 plus 1 squared. And then, um, so step 4, you're just solving. And then 8 minus 7 is 1. Okay. And you might want to write down PEMDAS, too, because, yeah, you do need to do what's in the parentheses first before you square. Okay, you can't do 2 squared plus 1 squared there. you got to do 2 plus 1 first, which is 3, and then square it. Okay, 3 squared is 9, and 1 squared is 1. And that's actually it. Okay, it's actually not that hard um, as long as you do what's in the parentheses first, and then you square it. Now, sometimes, though we do have to simplify the radical. And then, so for a couple of these examples, I will show you how to do that. For example, if you got 
the square root of 32. Okay, that can be simplified down to something else. And I will show you how to do that in case you don't know. But for a lot of these questions on the worksheet, the answer is going to be a radical like this. It's not going to be a whole number. So the distance between those two points is square root of 10, which is something a little bit bigger than 3. Okay? And just remember what we're actually solving for. We're solving for that hypotenuse of the triangle. We're trying to figure out how far those two points are. In this case, it was negative 1, 7, and 2, 8. Okay, second example. We have negative 8, negative 7, and negative 2, negative 5. So always label your points. Just like that. So negative 8 is x1, negative 7 is y1, negative 2 is x2, negative 5 is y2. Just like before, for step 2, write the formula out. Then you're going to plug those values in. You always have d equals square root. Okay, then I'm going to plug in x2, which is negative 2. Plug in x1, which is negative 8. Plus y2, which is negative 5. Minus y1 which is negative 7. All of that squared. Okay. All right, so negative 2 minus negative 8. Yes, that's the same as negative 2 plus 8, which gives you what? 6, thank you. So we're going to have 6 squared there. And then negative 5 minus negative 7 is the same as negative 5 plus 7, which is 2. So that's going to be plus 2 squared. And I guess you could keep the parentheses if you want. You don't really have to do that. Okay, so 6 squared is 36. And 2 squared is 4. So we have D is equal to the square root of 40. Okay, now this can be simplified, and I'm going to show you how to do this. Actually, let me ask you guys first. Does anybody know how to simplify the square root of 40? If not, that's perfectly fine. I'm not, I'm not expecting you to know how to do that. Okay, so let's, let's rewrite it right here. So the thing you have to look for when simplifying a, a radical is, is there a perfect square that goes into it? Now, let's talk about perfect squares. Perfect squares are 1, 1 times 1, 4 just 2 times 2, 9, which is 3 times 3, 16, 4 times 4, 25 is 5 times 5, 36. All those numbers are perfect squares because you can take a number and multiply it by itself to get there. So we want to break this down and figure out, if, is there a perfect square that goes into 40? And the answer is yes, 4. 4 is a perfect square. So we're going to rewrite this as uh, 4 times 10. Okay. If a perfect square doesn't go into it, like the last example, there is no perfect square that goes into 10, then you don't have to simplify the radical. Okay? Another example I gave was square root of 32. Since 16 goes into there, you would break that down as well. Okay? So once you get to that point, then you write it as two separate radicals. Okay? So you figure out the perfect square that goes into it, rewrite it as, you know, two things multiplied, and then you break it down into two radicals from there. And then the last step is actually just to take the square root of the perfect square. So what's the square root of 4? 2. The other, the other one is not going to be a perfect square, so you can just leave it like it is. And like I said before, if you need help with that on the worksheet, I'd be happy to help you. But that's all you do. So that would be your final answer for the distance to radical 10. Yes, it's the same thing as the, the square root of 40, it's just simplified. So we want to make sure and do that. Okay? For the next example, this one's going to come out evenly. It, sometimes you will get a whole number. Okay, so D is equal to, oh, whoops. 
got to label my points first. Um, so the first point, 7, negative 7, is x1, y1. Next point, 2, 5, is x2, y2. All right. Once again, we're going to write the distance formula out, and then we're going to plug stuff in that we know. So x2 is 2. x1 is 7. And we're squaring that. y2 is 5. y1 is negative 7. So it's minus negative 7 squared. Okay, so we're going to have 2 minus 7, which is going to give us negative 5. And remember, that's in parentheses, and we're squaring it. So that should always come out positive. All right, the distance, the horizontal or vertical distance between two points is always going to be positive. Distance is always positive. All right, and then um, 5 minus negative 7 is the same as 5 plus 7, which is 12. So it would be plus 12 squared. All right, so what is the what is negative 5 squared? 25. Remember, negative times negative is a positive. And 12 squared is 144. So we have the square root of 169. Does anybody know what that is? What is the square root of 169? Do we know? 13, yes. So in this case, the distance between the two points is a whole number, okay? It's going to happen a few times in the worksheet, but like I said, most of the time it'll come out to an even, rad uh, I mean, a uh, radical number.